Arizona's first synagogue invites one and all to its annual Purim extravaganza. To explain what that all entails, Rabbi Samuel Kohan is visiting us once again. Rabbi, what an honor to have you on our show again. It is always a pleasure. Great to be back. I think it's wonderful. So we have, obviously, we are ready for a party. You guys are set, <laughs> yeah. So tell us about this holiday. So Purim is really just a pure party. It's a wonderful springtime festival, and it fits in with the Jewish pattern. We say in nine words we can explain most Jewish festivals. They tried to kill us. We survived. Let's eat. Let's eat. So Purim uh, commemorates, yeah, you got the food, you got lucky <laughs> this time. Um, Purim commemorates the salvation or the saving of the Jews of Persia. 2,500 years ago or so, mm -hmm. when they, in an elaborate, wonderful book called the Book of Esther, which is actually here in this scroll, it's called the Megillah. When we chant it, it's the whole Megillah. That's where that term comes from. And we do um, plays and all kinds of food and carnivals, and it's really a great fun festival to remember being saved. Um, it's not too serious. God isn't even mentioned in the book of Esther, the only book in the Hebrew Bible where God isn't mentioned. And so the tradition arose of acting it all out. So we do a full musical to parody the story of the book of Esther. Oh, wow. And this year we did a parody of the Book of Mormon called the Book of Esther, but it's much cleaner than the original if you've ever yeah, seen it. Yeah, you actually just saw it. I did. I'm glad to hear it's cleaner, Rob. <laughs> You know, um, it's funny because there's a beauty contest, there's a king, there's queens, there's trumpets. And so we had to kind of turn that story into something that expressed the actual text of the Book of Esther. Um, and we did so with full musical accompaniment and songs, and we wrote all the parodies ourselves. Um, and we don't apologize to the authors of the Book of Mormon. They have something to apologize for on their own. Um, but it's great music and it's really a fun experience. And that's a 10 a.m. Sunday. And then that's followed by a carnival that's open to everybody. It's for kids, there's rides, there's food. And there are hamantaschen. That's oh, what wow. this is? That's what it is. So these are kind of like, almost like filled cookies, right? They, they are. Okay. And there's a lot of butter and uh, sugar, and these are apricot. They're also made with poppy seed and prune and mm. strawberry and cherry, and my wife makes them with strawberry rhubarb and chocolate. There's oh. all kinds of great flavors. The idea is it's supposed to look like what you have in your lap. This is, um, a homentash is supposed to look like the hat that Haman, the great, okay. sorry, this is... Haman, for the, okay. you know, see? Um, the great villain of the Purim story, and so he wore a three-cornered hat. Why it looks like, I don't know, George oh, Washington's see. hat, okay. I'm not sure Here's exactly, but by tradition, you make the cookie and then you fill it, and it is the best food known to humanity. Oh, I can smell. Uh, um, I've had these before. You've brought them on before. I yeah, have. They are delicious. They are really spectacular. These yeah. are made by the Temple Emanuel Men's Club, and they are incredible bakers. Oh, yeah. Um, we usually sell out. If you get there, you know, come at 10 for the show and stick around for the food and the fun. And whenever we say the name Haman, you're mm -hmm. supposed to use what this is called a grogger uh -huh. um, or a rashan and you make a lot of noise to blot out his name so <laughs> that's a real grogger anybody I know okay I feel like I'm getting the hang of it you're <laughs> definitely getting the hang of it so, so something about this holiday and really mm -hmm. all holidays that you come on and talk about there's sure. there's so many traditions so many ways that we celebrate and and that's kind of something special right there. So tell us a little bit more about... So let me give you a little yeah. bit more in depth. Um, the Purim is not only a statement about, wow, we're so glad we survived and isn't this wonderful, but it's also about identity and affirming identity when you're not sure if it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. And Jews were always a minority. We understood what it meant to be a minority. And in a situation of persecution, it was really a challenge to say, I'm Jewish and I'm proud of it. Mm. And Purim kind of helps us reaffirm that. And we do that, we have here, this is actually the Scroll of Esther as, uh, thank you. If you've got Haman. Yes, I'll You've got <laughs> Haman, you've got Hamantash. <laughs> That's right, you got it, exactly. Right, I'm on it. So this is an actual Megillah, wow. a Scroll of Esther, handwritten on wow, parchment by a scribe. Look at that. Um, That's and crazy. so parchment, of course, is uh, sheepskin. You take a look, looks like yes. this. Yes. And we chant the whole thing on, so Sunday we'll chant a little bit of it as part of our big pre Purim celebration. And then Wednesday night at Temple Emmanuel, we chant the whole thing. So I'll give you a little flavor of it. Mm -hmm. 
and we'll chant the whole text of it, and that's where the term, you know, reading the whole Megillah, because you're supposed to hear the whole story, the story of the king of Persia who had this great empire and how he married a young Jewish woman who concealed her identity, Esther, and then she's put forward by her uncle Mordechai, and then they have to try to save the Jews from Haman. Um, and it's a really interesting, it's a much more complicated kind of adult story than you would think. Mm -hmm. So in a way, the Book of Mormon, as the Book of Esther right. helps, you know, it, it works on two levels. Kids love it because they can boo Haman and cheer for Mordechai and Esther, and they're singing and dancing, and it's fun. And adults can understand that it really has to do with affirming that you're proud of your own identity. It's true for Jews, it should be true for everyone. And I know you guys are inviting everyone. I know it's free for all to it's come. It's free for everybody. And I'm gonna remind everybody exactly the dates and times and of everything. But Rabbi, again, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for bringing me some cookies. It is my pleasure. <laughs> are you gonna keep all those to yourself? Are you gonna share them with Heather? She's gonna share. <laughs> she doesn't know it yet. We'll see what happens. Because on Purim, you're <laughs> supposed to share with share. everyone. Uh, Mishloch Manot, now bring she has gifts to, to friends. <laughs> this is already hard for me. I'm Temple sorry. Emmanuel. See? Purim Extravaganza and Carnival is this Sunday, March 20th, starting at 10 a.m. at the Temple, 225 North Country Club Road. Call 327-4501 for information or go online to templeemmanueltucson.org.